Okay, so we're back. So I went ahead and just uh, sized up a few of these cases here. Sized, these are all sized and deprimed. So now our next, my next step um, is to inspect them. Um, for the usual suspects, uh, 223 that would like to split, likes to split up here um, around the neck. Look for any splits, big dents, dings, any stress fractures. Um, look for any beginnings of any case head separations. Um, really keep a good sharp eye out. Um, take a good look at it. The other thing that I do at this point is I measure to see if the case needs to be trimmed. Now. Pistol cartridges do not have to be trimmed because they're straight wall cartridges. Um, now because rifle cartridges sometimes do have to be trimmed <clears throat> because of the neck and because of the tighter tolerances of rifle chambers. So um, at this step I choose to do kind of both at once. Um, you have a couple different methods. Um, just a micrometer. They sell case gauges like these. Um, you know, you can find your 223 Remington on here and just see if it passes and see right away we see this one doesn't it doesn't fit in there so that one um, is a no-go um, put that in the no-go bin another tip make sure you identify what's the no the go in the no-go bin because if you're sitting there trying to crank out prep a bunch of cases it can get pretty monotonous and all of a sudden you're staring at the the bins rem trying to remember which one was go and which one was no-go and then all of a sudden you don't know which ones you've been throwing them in so ask me how I know so I went ahead and did green for go red for no go so I don't like to use this I prefer a micrometer um, I set it to 1.760 take it off millimeters that might help and actually I set I try I like to set it to 1.759 I like to give myself just a little bit and then lock it down nice and tight and then so what I do is I slide it in here okay now this one passes but what I'm also doing is inspecting the case at the same time so I roll it in my fingers looking for any of those sign warning signs that I was talking about before the next thing I'm looking for I don't know if you can see it here. Hopefully it'll focus. Probably not. Is this little rascal here? Let me see if I can get a view of the camera if I can point this out. This is where 223 prep gets nasty. Okay, the focus on this thing is not working. But you'll see this little ridge. This little thin line around the primer pocket and that's a crimp. Um, they do that, they crimp in the the primers, and that can make it a nightmare for um, putting the new primer in there. So that's another thing that you're looking for. So actually, normally what I would do is have another bin for crimped pockets and then not crimped pockets. Um, you don't always have to remove the primer pocket, or ex um, excuse me, you don't always have to remove the crimp. Sometimes you can get the the primer set in there but it's dangerous I don't recommend it so if you have crimps you don't want to be forcing it in there so those need to be reamed or swaged um, so we'll talk about that later as well um, I'll refer you to my uh, Dylan super swage video for that um, on how I choose to deal with it um, the other option is just using a chamfering tool and actually just chamfering this isn't the right, this isn't the proper one for it, but you can actually chamfer that little ring out of there and um, do it that way. It's quite time consuming. So, um, the other thing, you can look for that beforehand too, so you're not doing this all at the same time. Like I said, prepping 223 is it's a lot of work. I mean, by the time you get to the loading, it's all the work is done. So, um, that's what we continue to do. We just look for no-go. Go, no-go. Go. This one's too long, needs to be trimmed. No crimp on that guy. That one's a go. 
really look the necks over closely that's where you can start to see little splits and little stress fractures and stuff like that also look at the head and like I said just be really vigilant this is it's less forgiving than uh, pistol that's for sure so that's the general idea there for this stage it's inspection and measuring to see if they need to be trained so. I'll do some of these and then I'll come back with the next step. Okay, so I'm back and uh, went ahead and measured and inspected all of our brass. Uh, I did have one split neck, so that one went in the junk bin. And um, we have our go and our no go here. So this red bin, these need to be trimmed. They're uh, past the maximum allowable length for a 223 cartridge. So a very nice uh, budget option to do that is uh, the Lee zip trim and then this uh, what is it called? This is the Lee cutter with a ball grip is what it is um, and this is, this here is a case length gauge um, that's set to I believe Lee sets theirs to 1.75 so 1 and 3 quarters um, which 1.76 is the maximum 1.74 is the minimum so this will put you right in the middle. So all you do is, and I did another video on this thing. I mean, this whole setup was like less than 30 bucks for the the cutter and um, the zip trim. It works really well. So you just get it set in there, get it square, put your ball cutter in there. And usually one pull is enough. Now. The other thing you need to do is, now that this has been trimmed, is you need to chamfer and deburr this. You need to take the edge off the inside, and then take the edge off the outside. Otherwise you can have problems when you go to seat the bullet, and plus you get a, it gives you a better seat on the inside of the neck there. Another thing you can do is a little bit of a bonus is you can get most of the lube off now. So I like to use steel wool and just give it one more pull. And now most of the lube is gone. So that's really nice to have that out of the way. So, of course now I'm throwing this back into the go bin with um, others that are already lubed. But at least those are all ready to go as far as length. So, that's it. You just go through and trim the ones that need to be trimmed. Chamfer and deburr. There's no need to chamfer or deburr the ones that you don't have to trim. That's only for the ones that have to be trimmed. So that's it for trimming. I mean, it does all the work. Just make sure you get all the way through the primer hole and up against this back plate.